Hey, hi everyone, I'm Nana. In today's session, we'll understand how to expose an FX class as a REST web service and then connect Postman to Salesforce using Connect and App in order to test the REST web service. So what we're going to do is so first, let's, uh, first let's understand how to expose an FX class as a REST web service. And for that, let me uh, open my one of the existing uh, API class for which what I do is from quick find, I type in FX classes and click on this and look for the class or you can you have, you would have to probably create a new uh, FX class if you are doing it for the first time and the code is uh, available in my sfdc one stop blog as well this is a code you can leverage that and um, for today's demo i'll go with my existing uh, my first rest api class so in order to expose an Epix class as a REST web service, you have to define the class as global. That is first point. And very important is you have to annotate the classes at REST resource. And URL mapping is case sensitive. And under URL mapping, you define the endpoint, which would be con which would be consumed by the external, sy external system. In this case, at this endpoint, I'll how I will be consuming using Postman, right? And all the methods, all the REST methods needs to be defined as global static. So you see different methods, get, delete, post, and all of these methods needs to be annotated with the relevant annotation. If you wanted to pull data from Salesforce, go with at HTTP get REST annotation. Or if you wanted to go with the delete transaction, you will need to go with the at HTTP delete annotation. If it is something um, you wanted to create data, then we can make use of our REST method called as post, which we uh, define with HTTP post annotation. The other two annotations are at HTTP put and at HTTP patch, which is put is used to use for upset transaction, patch is used for update transaction. So over here in today's demo, we'll see how to Pull the data from Salesforce, which has got account account number as one two three four five. So we wanted to pull the data, pull one record because I have defined as limit as one. Pull one record which has got account number as one two three four five. And then we'll also see how to create account uh, uh, data into Salesforce for which I am passing the request as name and account number. So this is something my request. So. Uh, Two operations, one is get operation and the other one is post operation will be uh, demonstrating in today's demo using Postman. Coming to Postman, you have got two different uh, versions. This is the web version. All you have to do is if you're doing it for the first time, create account for yourself. You need username and password for which. And the other one is you can also download the desktop agent as well, desktop app. So this is my desktop app. And if you are downloading the desktop app or even if it is your web version, just go to the workspaces. You can make use of by all out of the box available, my workspace, this is where I am. And what you do is you can create a new collection because you wanted to save all of your requests in that particular collection. Maybe I'll name that as collection as SFPC one stop. So this is my collection. Now what I do is the first I wanted to, since I wanted to connect Postman to Salesforce, I need to get the access token. And to get an access token, what I do is I click on new and I, since that's an API request, HTTP request, I need to create a HTTP request. Since I need to get an access token, I will go with the post method and I will uh, go with uh, this particular request URL. This is the existing tab. For simplicity, I'll just copy and paste it here. It's nothing but login.salesforce.com slash services slash what to slash token. So this is the request URL. So I'm just hitting this request in order to get the access token. But in order to get the access token, I have to define different uh, Parameter. I have to define key and value for uh, my body part of the post method. And these are different uh, key value pairs that I have to define. And if you remember in the last session, we have created a, created a connected app, which we called it as Postman Connected 
service and what i do is i'll open this i'll just click on view from this drop down and it takes me to this particular page and i would need this consumer key consumer secret to define my uh, to define my body so grant underscore type is password maybe i'll create a new one this is my new one right grant underscore type is nothing but password and uh, what is the other uh, what is the other attribute that i have to fill in client id client underscore id i'll just define all the attributes so it's easy for me to client underscore secret and then username and password right Username is my Salesforce username and password is your Salesforce password followed by a security token. Just in case if you are not familiar how to get the security token, all you have to do is go to your uh, settings. Just click on reset my security token. Just click on this button and you will get the security token uh, you will get an email and just get that security token and put that next to your password so i'll use my user password followed by security token under password value and client id and client secret client id is nothing but the consumer key client secret is nothing but consumer secret let me copy the consumer key which is client ID and put that in my client underscore ID, right? And now let me copy the secret and put that under client underscore secret. Now, I since I'm done with my body, a body, I mean, body section of the postman, let me click on send. So I would expect an access token to be generated. So this is how I need to generate uh, the access token. So basically what I'm doing is I'm connecting Postman to Salesforce in order to perform different operations, in order to test different operations called as get or the post method, right? And I'll use this access token for the different uh, operations for the um, get and post. Now what I do is I'll copy this. And also I have the ability to save this particular request. So I'll save this under different uh, workspace, SWC one stop. Okay. So I close this tab just to avoid confusion. Now what I do is I would need to use this access token. Since I need to use the access token and since I need to get the data which has got account number equal to one, two, three, four, five, I will just uh, authorization. I'll, under headers, what you do is key authorization and the access token which you got in the step one, use it here, copy it here. Follow, I mean, first you have to define the value as OAuth and followed by the access token. And under get method, what I do is I fall, I just copy the endpoint URL. Endpoint URL is nothing but domain name, my instance URL followed by services slash epic slash uh, epic stress slash api slash account slash one two three four five if you remember this is my endpoint URI. let me go back to my class if you remember this is the endpoint URI, right a slash api slash account slash star this is what my endpoint URI is i just click on send i get my data which means this record has got data which has account number equal to one two three four five so basically using postman the first step one is i got the access token step two is i'm um, using that access token in order to connect to salesforce to get the data from salesforce and the condition is a account record which has got account number equal to one two three four five this is what i have defined in my epics class as well this is what i'm returning now let's see the other method as well and all the requests you can save it to the required collection if you want uh, this would be beneficial for you in the next uh, future uh, um, testing as well 
So now let's do another operation. I will close all the tabs and then I will go with the other operation called as post. So as I said, there are different operations, there are different methods that we have. Get method, post method is for creating data, put method is for upsetting data, patch method is for updating the existing records, delete method is for deleting the records. Let me go with patch. And again, what I do is I define my header, which is authorization uh, and copy the access token again. The access token which I got from step one. Copy this and put it here. What space followed by the access token which you got in the step one. Now what I do is I need to have the method. So I need I'll again use the same endpoint API slash account. This is my instance URL followed by services slash epics rest for all the rest services. This is how it would be instance URL followed by services followed by epics rest. And this is where you have to, you have to do the, you have to suffix the endpoint URL with the endpoint URL, which is referred in the epics class, right? Now what I do is since I have defined my endpoint URL and define the method as well as post, now I'll go back to post, body and define the request here. And for request, what I do is I will again uh, request uh, since REST accepts JSON and XML, I'll go with JSON as an input. The request can be in the form of JSON or in the form of XML. Again, what I do is I just go back here and so this is the structure. Just to save time, I'm for I'm just uh, copying and pasting. It's nothing but the name, the name uh, parameter which is defined in my post. It's account, uh, it's case sensitive, and the account number as well. And I'm just defining with the relevant number. In this case, I'll just make it as anything. Name as SLBC one star YouTube, which means the post method. What does postman a uh, post method tells? It says that I want to create or insert data into Salesforce and account record. Uh, the name is this one and account number is this. So I'll just hit on send and make sure that you are choosing the proper content type, which in this case is JSON. If you want to use XML, go ahead and go use that format as well. But for today's demo, I want to go with JSON format. And this will be uh, the format is the flower braces. Under flower braces, we define all the parameters. I have only defined two parameters, which is name and account number. And those two parameters were separated by comma. And uh, each of this name and this is key value pair. Nothing but JSON is nothing but a key value pair. This is how you define the request. Once you send the request, you would expect a account record to be populated. Let me open this account record in my Salesforce org. Second, looks like there is a problem. Or let me search with this name. The account is created, but the URL is not proper. Why is it like one second? So this is the account record that I have created using Postman, the account name and account number. Let me see whether there is an issue with the one second. Let's control B. Okay, looks like the way I was, uh, I copied was not right. So it takes some time for you to display the newly record, uh, newly created record. So that is reasonable. It was not searchable in some time back, but now it is searchable. Yeah. So this is how you have to create data or you have to pull the data from Salesforce. So in today's demo, we have understood how to make use of get method and post method, but there are different other methods. REST methods, which you can make use of according to the business use case. 
let me quickly go back to my presentation just to make sure that i have covered everything as i said all the apex class and methods needs to be defined as global and methods needs to be defined as global static and these are different rest methods which we have get method post method delete all of this we have discussed and then apex rest support two formats of representation for the request structure which is json and xml and rest request and rest response objects are available by default this these are the two objects which i have used in all of my uh, rest methods because this is available by default and the other important url mapping which i have defined under your under rest resource denotation is case sensitive if you are using if you are um, say let's say suppose this is small a and if under when you are um, in postman or even the external system by mistake they are using capital a you will not see the expected output so that is something we have to keep in mind is case sensitive and contain a wildcard character coming to postman postman is a basically a api client you can use postman to test your rest web service or you can use postman to test your soap call as well for today's demo we have um, seen how to connect postman to salesforce using connected app and test in rest web service basically any apex class can be uh, can be defined or can be exposed as a rest or soap web service when we say apex web service it can be rest web service or it can be soap web service we have only focused on rest web service and using postman we basically use it is used by developers or and also by uh, sometimes by testers as well in order to troubleshoot or test the rest web service in order to understand where the issue is without relying on the external system who is making the same rest uh, web service call we can uh, understand if the issues with the request the way the way they are passing the parameters in the request structure or uh, how the response is or if the issue is with the external system itself and for external systems what you do is you create a different integration user as a best practice and define that user as a api enabled user it's nothing but you go to your users and uh, you have got a profile perm called as api enabled you just enable for that particular integration users okay it's just uh, this is not the right profile but uh, you just have one perm called as api enabled this is the perm that you need to enable for the integration users and you also have an interesting trailer module called as this one postman where you would find the link of the web version of the postman yeah that's all i have for today's video thank you so much for watching all our videos and providing all your valuable feedback please do provide the uh, please do continue to provide your feedback have a great day bye bye